Hello! I am very excited about this new series of videos I'm doing uh, today, this being the first. It's a, a game spotlight, as I'm calling it. You may or may not know this, even if you've watched my channel for a while, is I love making video games, simple little video games, and I have a number of them up on my website, all free, all open source, GPL licensed, and all categorized on my website. I make them because I love them, and I'm not very good at, one, finishing the games, and two, telling people and sharing them, and I'm trying to get better about that, and that's what this series is about. So each week, I'm going to try to spotlight a game that I'm working on. Either a full game or maybe some techniques I've been working on for different games. Today, we're going to focus on a game that I just finished working on called Death's Collection. It's it, nothing spectacular. I spent maybe two weeks in my spare time making it. And I'm really focusing on games playing on my arcade here. But of course, this will run on any computer. Uh, it's written in Godot. It's simple to set up. You just need a keyboard for one player or controllers for multiple players. It is unlimited multi-local player. What does that mean? I've set it up so that if you plug in controllers, it doesn't matter how many controllers you plug in, that's how many players that will be playing. It's a co-op game. Basically, when you have controllers set up, when a level starts, if you start moving a controller, all of a sudden that player will appear and join the game. So you can have, uh, theoretically, 100 controllers plugged into your computer, and you'll be able to have 100 players on the screen at once. I wanted to just spotlight this game. I also want to give credit, you'll see in the game there's credits, to an artist that that I've been supporting on Patreon, and I just love his artwork. He does a lot of sprite artwork and tile work. His name is Louis Zuno. Check out his link in the description, and if you check out the game, you'll see the credits in there. But he does great, great work. I've been supporting for years, and I've been kind of basing my games on his artwork. So he creates some artwork, and I go, I'm gonna make a game based on that artwork. But let's go ahead and look at this game. The basic concept of this game is your death, and you have to go around collecting souls and avoiding some obstacles. There's 19 levels. Every three levels, there's a cutscene that introduces something new. So let's go ahead, and I'm just going to give you a quick overview. But the code is up on GitLab. You can download it there, modify it yourself. I would love to see you guys add things to it and fork it and then uh, push those commits back to me. Uh, but also, there'll be a link in the description on my website. There's a web page for it that links to I just started setting up an itch.io uh, site, but you can play this game in your web browser. So we'll start off with the title screen here. It says press start. Really press pretty much any key uh, on a button on the controller and it will start the game. If you don't start the game, when uh, death gets to the other side of the screen, it will go into credits for the game and the music and the art. Here we have the license information for the game and of course credit to the artist who did the artwork and then also credit to the musician who did uh, one or two of the songs. Not all the songs in this game, but a few of them are by him. I'll go ahead and start the game. We're going to start off with a little cutscene here telling you what to do. Collect skeleton souls. That's the point of the game. Once you collect uh, all the souls on the screen, uh, a portal will open that you can then go to the next level. And the first few levels you just collect. There's no real obstacles. You just collect the souls and move on. There are gold skeletons and blue skeletons. The gold skeletons can fall off ledges. The blue skeletons will not fall off ledges unless pushed, which happens in later levels with things like ogres. Jumping ahead past the third level, we have our first little or second little cutscene here with some enemies. So we have these flying eyes here that, uh, when striking you, will kill you. Killing you basically just sends you back to the beginning of the level. Moving on, three more levels past this. Here, uh, it's showing you that now it's the level's gonna be dark and you have a lamp. And this lamp will allow you to see what's near you. And of course, let me grab a controller here. If I move a controller, you can see you have another player and he will also have a lamp. So now you go through these levels in the dark, collecting souls without being able to see the whole level at once. You have three levels like that. And we get our next cutscene telling you to avoid ogres. So we'll go ahead and we collect. We still have the flying eyes, we have our skeletons, and after collecting all these souls, we'll have to go down back down to the bottom to get out of this level and avoid that ogre. Skipping ahead three more levels, we have another cutscene. We have pits that will teleport you to other parts of the level. So as you can see, enemies and you can teleport to other parts of the level. We have three levels with the teleporters like so. And now we have a cutscene showing the ogre can smash skeletons and turn him into multiple skeletons, giving you more to collect. So he makes the, the mini skeleton souls to collect when he hits them. And also, if he hits you, you of course die and go back to the end of the level. Again, if we jump three more levels, I add another enemy that doesn't actually hurt you, he just shrinks you, which allows you to get through these smaller holes. So you're shrunk for a number of seconds, 
And then if you want to get back up through the hole, you have to get shrunk again. And once you beat the 19th level, you're greeted with this simple little end screen that you've collected all the souls. It goes into the credits for the game once more, and then back to the title screen. As I was saying earlier, this is an unlimited multiplayer game, so I have player one going, but if I just start moving the joystick for player two, player two all of a sudden appears on the screen. And if I break out players three and four, as soon as I start moving the joysticks for them, those players start existing. And if I have other controllers, I can plug those in, and as soon as I start moving the player around, they will appear, and again, Unlimited, um, obviously at some point your computer will crash if you have thousands of players on there. Haven't gotten that far, I don't have that many controllers. But just be aware, this is a co-op game. So again, this game is free, open source under a GPL license. It's fun, simple, for all ages. Check it out, again, you can download it, install it on your system, or just play it in the web browser. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you look forward to my next video on the next project I'm working on. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with a K. Links in the description, and again, have a great day.